Celtic are one of the most decorated clubs in the world of football. Whilst it is widely agreed that Jock Steen is the club's greatest ever manager, all the success they have achieved may not have been possible without a man called Willie Mavy. Mavy managed Celtic for over 40 years, and in his time there, he led them to a grand total of 30 major trophies, with 16 Scottish League titles and 14 Scottish Cups. Without him, Celtic may very well not have become the domestic force that they have been for so many years. This is a story of Willie Mavy, the man who made Celtic. Willie Maley was born in County Down, Ireland, on the 25th of April, 1868. His father, a sergeant in the British Army, moved the family to Cathcart, a village near Glasgow, when Maley was one year old. Maley left school at 13, first working at a printworks, and later a telephone company in Glasgow. Whilst doing better in athletics than football as a child, he would have a brief period at 3rd Lanark. In 1887, a delegation from newly founded Celtic visited the Maley household with the aim of recruiting Willie's brother, Tom. Tom, however, was not in, and Willie was told to ask Tom if he would consider joining Celtic. At the end of the meeting, Willie Maley was asked if he was interested in signing for Celtic too. It was not apparent at the time, but it was the first steps in creating a dynasty that would last decades. Willie Maley played in Celtic's first ever game, a 5-2 win over Rangers. He made over 100 appearances for the club, winning two Scotland caps, three league titles and two Scottish Cups. In 1897, at the age of 29, Willie Maley was appointed as Celtic's first ever manager. Maley's style of management was vastly different to the conventional method, more akin to a director of football. Maley did not work with the players in training and didn't speak to them before or after games. He watched matches from the director's box, and players found out if they were in the starting lineups by checking the newspaper or the club notice board. Maley devoted a huge deal of his time to working behind the scenes. While Celtic had been a buying club in previous years, Maley built up a network to help him discover young talents and bring them through the ranks, so that they could learn the Celtic way and be integrated into the team. Maley succeeded straight away, winning the league in his first season in charge, but it would take him a few years to build what many saw as his first great side. Between 1905 and 1910, Celtic would win six league titles in a row, as well as winning the first league and cup doubles in Scottish history in 1907 and 1908. Maley had built a great team around the likes of Alec McNair, Jimmy McNenemy and Jimmy Quinn and the record of six league titles in a row would remain unbroken until the 1970s. Maley was a pragmatist, and knew when fresh blood was needed. In the 1910s, he built a second great team that won four league titles in a row between 1914 and 1917, and also set a record for the longest unbeaten run in British football, 62 games. This run lasted from November 1915 until April 1917, and this record stood until Brendan Rodgers broke it with Celtic in 2017. This was all amongst the backdrop of the First World War, with Maley faced with the task of keeping morale high. As a man with a military background, Maley made sure results were known to those battling on the front line, and soldiers often knew Celtic's results within hours of the final whistle. Celtic won more titles in the 1920s, but under the management of Bill Struth, Rangers were stealing a lot of the honours from them. It was in the 1930s where he built his third great team. However, the decade started with tragedy, as Celtic goalkeeper John Thompson died after sustaining a head injury during a game against Rangers. Maley was heavily affected by the death, with Thompson being one of many that Maley had watched grow into a footballer from a young age. This was followed a couple of years later by the death of Peter Scarf from tuberculosis. Maley was, however, able to honour the memories of these players, winning the league again in 1936 and 1938, as well as the Scottish Cup in 1937. However, the end of Maley's lengthy tenure had already begun. 
Many point to assistant manager Jimmy McNenemy as the one who truly guided Celtic to these titles in the 1930s. Willie Maley was by now 70, with the increasing demands on him as manager beginning to wear him down. The idea of leaving Celtic, though, seemed imponderable, as the club was his life. 1938, as Celtic's 50-year anniversary, seemed like the perfect time for Maley to call it a day. But stubborn as ever, he vowed to carry on. By 1940, Celtic were bottom of the table, and in a meeting with the Celtic board, Maley finally agreed to retire. It brought to an end a managerial spell of 43 years, on top of an overall 52-year association with the club. Maley did not set foot in Celtic Park for 13 years afterwards, following a dispute over a payment, but eventually, in 1953, a Willie Maley testimonial match was agreed in honour of the Celtic legend. The now 85-year-old Maley was welcomed home as a hero. His association with Celtic can be summarised by the quote, The club has been my life, and I feel without it, my existence would be empty indeed. Willie Maley died at the age of 89 on the 2nd of April 1958. Whilst his name may not be known much outside Celtic Park, he remains iconic amongst the green and white of Glasgow, with his name often sung by the Celtic faithful to this day. Celtic have won many honours, but it was Maley who got the ball rolling for them, turning them into a club that developed young, local talent, a philosophy that was continued by Jock Steen that led to them winning the European Cup. He is one of the biggest figures in the history of Scottish football, and there are few in the game that have won as much as Willie Maley did.